right. Okay, so they allow me to do that. All right. Hopefully I'll see that better. All right. Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. So y'all know my slogan, life is a game of chess. All right, guys. So I actually I actually want to uh, talk about uh, a few of my games here with the L shot system. Uh, definitely, guys, a very um, tactical opening, you know, that I love. You know, uh, again, guys, the reason why I play these um, type of openings, because, again, uh, your opponent uh, would think that you're an amateur or a passer, you know, thinking that they don't, that you don't know what you're doing and everything. And it's a very tricky opening, very tactical, very aggressive, uh, which is the reason why I want to uh, the reason why I play it. So I wanted to share with y'all guys uh, three of the l -Shot system games. Uh, if y'all have any questions with certain moves and everything, uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, time in or pretty much time in and, uh, you know, comment. Uh, luckily, guys, hey, what up, Eternal Word? <laughs> you said got tactics, always got tactics. <laughs> All right, and this is another thing I do want to do. I do want to cover up these um, stuff here so that, you know, hopefully this should help. And sorry about earlier, guys, because I know earlier on, um, y'all probably had a notification that I was starting a live and everything. And, you know, I had some technical difficulties and all. So it was um, pretty crazy. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's actually um, get started with this, all right? So, um, all right, so obviously guys, I played as black and I played, or I played as black and my opponent played as white. Uh, obviously he is a, a, a 25-50, uh, very strong player, but I played the L shot, all right? So uh, the game go as follows on C4, I go C6, Knight C3 and Queen A5. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all guys. Uh, when I played uh, the actual L shot, um, he doesn't do the queen a5 very often. Uh, I realized that uh, the simple moves such as like uh, maybe c6, d6, and then um, h6 and g5, uh, it seems like it's a lot of better, especially for a lot of y'all that's learning the L shot. Uh, a lot of y'all may say that it seems like it's easier for y'all to you know, move with just C6 and D6 and A6 and G5 and all of that. So it seems a lot more easier for y'all. And um, I'm actually not mad at y'all. Uh, a lot of times uh, I may play that as well. Uh, but this time, guys, uh, I was just in a zone. Uh, so I just started doing the Queen A5 move. All right, so D4 is played, uh, G5 is played. Uh, that's what I play. Obviously, for all y'all that watch my videos, y'all already know uh, this is the type of stuff that I do play. Uh, but I can switch it up, though. Uh, I probably will show some videos where I do switch it up and everything. Uh, he goes H3 and I go H6. Uh, normally, guys, I go H5 and everything. But this time, uh, I didn't do it. I just did H6. Um, Knight F3, I go D6. And then uh my opponent plays um e4 all right so uh he plays e4 and uh i just go bishop g7 and normally guys like you know y'all already know uh for all y'all that read the l shot system book uh usually the knight on f3 is not there usually they will uh push f4 first before they go knight f3 but in this situation uh knight f3 is here um, so even though he, uh, trying to control the center, uh, I still go push to G7. Again, when you're playing with black, you know, you want to control dark square weaknesses. And sometimes guys, uh, the game could go a little bit different, which is what I want to explain. Um, so he goes Bishop D2. Now I remind you guys, I, I go Bishop D2 because, or he goes Bishop D2 because obviously guys, he wants to harass my queen. Uh, I'm not afraid of any discover attacks or any threats because 
uh, with knight d5, he's not threatening anything. Uh, I could just literally go back to queen d8 uh, or any other knight move. Uh, I could still go back to queen c7. I'm still fine. Um, it's not an issue um, at all. All right. So, all right. Uh, so I just, and that's the reason why I just went knight b to d7. And a lot of these moves that I play, guys, uh, and y'all can actually do an engine check uh, with yourself. Uh, Y'all will see that the engine does not agree with uh, a lot of the beginning moves that I've played at all. Uh, doesn't, you know, it doesn't agree with it. Um, it's not even recognized. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so my opponent goes bishop b2. I go queen c7. And honestly, guys, uh, I go queen c7 because number one, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, uh, I'm not really doing anything right now. Uh, with queen c7 at all i'm not doing anything uh so i just want to go back into the center um you know really try to create some weaknesses and then also i also believe that he's going to castle on um, king side which is another reason why i'll go queen c7 um i would love i mean obviously guys uh, if i had like an h5 and g4 um, pawn formation yes i would love to go uh, to the other side of the board, but obviously that would take uh, a few or pretty much would take a couple moves for me to do that. So uh, that's why I go queen c7. Uh, queen c2 is played. Uh, again, you know, it got me thinking he may wants to cancel queen side, uh, but I'm not really sure yet. So what I did is I just played knight f8. And again, guys, like I told y'all before, um, Sometimes if they castle queen side, normally I will go 96 and then go c5, uh, in which again controlling the dark squares on uh, and, and just for y'all that don't know, when you're playing the L side, this d4 uh becomes uh, a target. You know, a lot of times uh, your opponent may not know that, but this d4 pawn becomes a target. All right. And that's the reason why I go knight f8, because the threat I do have is knight e6, or sometimes knight g6, depending on the position. Um, so in this position, he actually goes h4, and this is uh, actually very typical um, for, you know, many people to do, or a lot of your opponents to do, just to break the center, and stuff, or re not really breaking the center, but just trying to break up this um, pawn formation because it seemed like a threat. Um, and y'all know with the L side, you know, uh, we like to push that pawn to g4. Uh, and then there's some games where L side does take the pawn, but I definitely love pushing the pawn better. Uh, which is what I did. Uh, I played g4, uh, knight h2, and then h5. Uh, bishop b3 is played. Uh, at this moment, guys, I'm really thinking like, yo, like this guy really about the castle queen side, you know? So in this position, you know, uh, you got to think like, okay, wh what is what is this guy about to do? Like, you know, what is this plan? Like, uh, what is it that he really wants to do um, in this position? You know, um, so, so this is what I'm thinking, guys. So after bishop b3, I'm thinking, okay, uh, again, with the L side, we'll control the king side and the queen side, which is uh, the idea. Um, do anybody know uh, what you would do if you were black? What would you do in this position? Anybody knows? I have two monitors, so I can actually see uh, all y'all comments and everything. All right. Yeah, so whoever said this move, uh, knight g6, uh, that's actually the move that I play um, in this position, uh, knight g6. Um, you're probably wondering why knight g6, why I go knight g6. So again, guys, and I ain't gonna lie to you, uh, I think the engine wanted me to go knight e6, um, in which it is really a, a great move. Uh, again, with knight e6, uh, it's actually a little bit better because you are controlling, uh, well, I mean, yeah, because you really are hitting um, the center and everything. But also, I was kind of looking at, you know, trying to create more weaknesses. And I'm going to tell you why. So with knight g6, I'm hitting the pawn on h4. But I'm not, again, guys, I'm not going after the pawn. That's not really my plan or my ultimate plan or long-term plan just to capture the pawn on h4 that that is not my ultimate plan the whole point is if, if he decides to go somewhere like 
uh, G3, you know, trying to protect um, his pawn. Then I could go back and go uh, knight F8 to knight E6. And the whole point is really trying to create a hole in that F3 um, square, which is a light square weaknesses, uh, which is pretty much the whole point. Um, and that's the reason why I did it. Uh, so now he cast the queen side and now I kind of like realize, okay, uh, I kind of figured he was going to cast the queen side. Okay, what, what, what should I do in this position now? All right, so the move that I play is on um, knight captures h4. Um, you're probably wondering why I take the pawn. He's going to open up your stuff, but technically he doesn't. Uh, because I have uh, I have a, a rook already behind uh, the pawn on h5. Number one, guys, uh, or that is number one. Number two, I am not castled on the king side anyway, you know, so that's another thing. Uh, and then I'm up a pawn as well, in which uh, if we get to the end game and we exchange everything down, uh, these two can be a dangerous um, pass pawn. So keep that in mind. So again, guys, what a lot of y'all got to think about is um, when you're playing openings, you know, uh, and you're exchanging pieces or whatever the case is, uh, you want to imagine, you know, how your end game will look. See, a lot of y'all, um, y'all learn about, you know, learning your openings, you know, learning middle games and things like that. But a lot of times you don't really uh, think about your long term. So anytime you're playing an open or anytime you're playing a game or especially in the middle game, you want to think of the end result. So always visualize what your end game going to be like, you know, uh, especially, especially guys, if you're up a pawn you know, and, you know, you have some pass points like I do here. I mean, obviously, it's not technically a pass point yet, but it's a potential uh, pass point. So, and I was visualizing if I had all these um, pieces, um, you know, exchanged off, like if, if all of them were exchanged, you know, how would my end game look? And my end game would look pretty well, uh, which is why I would have um, a good, you know, a plan, you know, to win. All right. So, um my opponent goes rook g1, which he has to. He got to protect his pawn. Uh, and then I go right back. Uh, the knight uh, on h4 did his job. So now I just went back to knight g6. And now I want to concentrate on um, getting close to the king. All right. So uh, my opponent goes f4. Uh, very ambitious. Uh, I, I would expect that from, you know, uh, my opponent to really get the strong center and, you know, like these strong pawns and get to the center. All right. So I would expect that. So, and that's why in this position, uh, I play E6. Now I play E6 guys uh, because number one guys, he's starting in F5 and once this knight go away, then he can threat maybe some stuff like E5, but maybe not right away yet, you know, but F5 is definitely a threat. Um, so, and that's the reason why I play uh, the E6 move. Uh, my opponent still was uh, aggressive with it, uh, which is uh, pretty much a mistake, which is a lot of opponents do uh, try to push the pawn so deep in the center to the point where they try to cause havoc in your position. But in reality, uh, it doesn't re it doesn't really do them no good. So and that's why I take the pawn. Uh, I take he takes and then I just go 97. So now he has a isolated pawn on F5 and where I'm actually attacking this pawn on um, twice. So I'm attacking with the knight and I'm attacking uh, with the bishop, all right? So what is um, white gonna do? Uh, he uh, defends the pawn with rook F1, not a problem. So I decided to go knight F6. Uh, obviously the engine didn't agree with me uh, on that move, uh, I don't think, uh, but I play knight F6 guy. Uh, bishop F4. Uh, which is what he played. And I played Bishop Catchers at five. Uh, Bishop at four was definitely uh, a blunder because uh, now I'm up like two pawns now. All right. So he goes Bishop D3. I take uh, Rook Catchers D3 and uh, I castle Queen side. Now, guys, uh, there was something that I did do that was uh, a mistake. Um, Hold on. Yeah, so I did castle queen side. Uh, let's actually, I want to see what the engine say, what the best move was. Yeah, so yeah, so the engine wanted me to castle king side. That's what the engine wanted me to do. Uh, like I said, guys, uh, the engine didn't agree with a lot of moves that I uh, made, but eventually it started agreeing with me when I started making some moves. But yeah, I, 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 I did kind of made a mistake uh, that C5. Uh, 
that C5 move. Uh, yeah, so instead of castling kingside, which I never, again, this is, again, that's computer talk. So I, I don't, uh, obviously, I don't play like a computer. So I, I don't know, but I castle queenside. Uh, the whole purpose of me castling queenside, guys, is just to really get out of the center of the board. Uh, and that's all I wanted to do. And then also, I wanted to have it where I have a, a, a rook D file. But I guess it kind of really didn't mean anything after this uh, C5 uh, move, uh, which really, uh, I was like, oh, crap, like, what the heck did I just do, right? So, uh, but then I found a move, guys. Uh, I played uh, Knight E to D5, uh, where I'm actually, uh, I'm hitting the dark square bishop, but then also I have threats like uh, Knight B4. But then also, guys, I just realized, or not really just realized, uh, well, I kind of did uh, the principle of the L side. Uh, and I talk about this through my course, guys. Uh, when you can take um, the white star square bishop, you are golden. You know, you are golden if you could take um, white star square bishop. So, and, and that came to mind. So, so in my mind, guys, I immediately was like, okay, if he takes uh, with the bishop, I'm automatically, um, you know, taking his dark square bishop automatically. And, and that's just how I felt. And then I felt like my pieces were a lot more active than uh, his was. Because as you see here, guys, I'm also looking at White's position. The White Knight on H2 is, like, very inactive. Like, it literally can't move anywhere, guys. Like, this Knight on H2 is, like, a bad Knight. Like, definitely a bad Knight. So, and, th and that's the type of stuff that I was looking at. I also was looking at how, you know, my pieces are very active. Um, even if he decides to change my knight, uh, I still have an active knight and a very annoying knight that will be on d5. And then also, if I could get the dark square bishop out the way, I have a very active dark square bishop in which uh, it could potentially make my position a lot better than usual. All right. So, so he goes knight catches d5. I take not a problem. I'm threatening knight b4. And again, I already see this. Threat. I already had in my mind. That if he goes bishop catches d6 and everything, I'm automatically taking that bishop. And of course, that's exactly what my opponent did, guys. He uh, he takes and I go rook catches d6. He takes and I go queen catches d6. And again, guys, this knight is inactive. Um, the you know it's very inactive. It is you might as well just say uh, I'm up a piece. Uh, because this knight is so uh, inactive, you know. And then again, guys, I'm threatening knight before. Uh, forking uh, the queen and a rook. So these are stuff that I'm threatening. Uh, I have a lot of things going on. Uh, so he does go after the pawn. He goes rook catches f7. But I don't think he was just trying to go after the pawn just to win a pawn. I just believe that he just really wants to improve the knight's position by maybe maybe knight f1, maybe knight e3, trying to change the annoying knight off of d5. You know, stuff like that, right? So uh, I go bishop a6, you know, Pretty much um, defending my bishop by counterattacking by going bishop a6. Uh, I did that first just to get my bishop out the way because I need this dark square bishop. Because again, if, if I get white's um, dark square bishop, I'm golden and I uh, completed that task. So now I should be great. All right. So king b1, and then I hit him with knight b4. I'm forking uh, the queen and a rook. Uh, too easy, right? So. He goes queen b3. Now, when I was looking at this position, I'm like, okay. I mean, obviously, guys, you got to uh, think um, pretty quickly, you know, things like that. But because uh, obviously, guys, this is a, a bullet game and everything. Um, so in, in, in this position, guys, um, I was thinking like, okay, I could just um, take this rook. But then I was like, oh, shoot, I can't take the rook because uh, if I do take this rook, uh, for instance, guys, if I take this rook, he got queen catcher's b7 check. Uh, if he comes here, then obviously, guys, I'm going to get mated. And the only way I can stop it is with the queen, and then he makes me. So that's not a good look. So I couldn't do that. So I, so I almost felt like, you know, I was like, okay, it got to be something, guys, you know, with knight b4. But uh, with queen b3, I was like, all right, man, it, it has to be something. So... What did I do in this position? Matter of fact, what would y'all do um, in this position? And I'll give y'all like five seconds to think, you know. I'll give y'all 10 seconds to think exactly what y'all do. 
Uh, if y'all want to comment below, comment below. What would y'all do in this position? So nobody knows. All right. All right, guys. Hold on, I'll give y'all a few minutes. Hold on. Well, y'all can always go back to it. So, uh, but yeah, guys. So the move that I play, and if y'all got this right, congratulations. Uh, the move that I play is on uh, rookie eight. Now you're probably like, dang, why not take the rook? Again, guys, I cannot take this rook due to the queen captured p7. So I just couldn't do that. So, but the whole point of rookie eight is I want to get the um the foul, guys. I have to get a foul. You know, I have to do that. You know, uh, you know, again, guys, I am threatening uh rook uh e1 uh with a check. Um, uh, I am threatening that too, but you know, uh it, it's a couple of things I'm threatening. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why this rookie eight is a a, a great move. The reason why this rookie eight is a a great move, guys, is because number one, not only am I getting the foul and everything, but also, guys, um, you know, I I am I am threatening, you know, some other stuff here. You know, what I mean, I'm threatening rookie one check. I mean, yes, he does has um the rookie one, in which I'm gonna just show you. I can show you better than I will tell you. So I'm gonna show you what my opponent did, and remind you guys, this knight is attacking um, the rook as well. And if I if I if I could take his rook and everything, I'm fine with that, and that's you know I'm good, you know. Uh, my opponent goes rook d1, you know, in which this was a mistake, guys. This was definitely a mistake, or I should say a blunder. Uh, the move that he actually uh, should have played uh, was probably um, rook f1. Uh, that was the move he should have played. Um, the reason being, guys, is, again, uh, you have to realize that, you know, this king is on a light square, you know, because this king is on a light square, I have a potential opportunity to go queen g6, especially because my knight is already hitting the rook. So by him actually preventing himself from uh, getting the rook or pretty much trying to prevent himself from getting his rook captured, it didn't really matter because now I hit him with the move. Uh, queen g6 check um so because it is um the move queen g6 check you know it opens a lot of doors for me to do something so yes um even though the rook is not you know cat like it's not like undefended or whatever i mean the queen is defending you know both rooks at the same time on both light squares and which is actually really really good but what he really failed to realize is uh, because I have a beautiful dark square bishop, which is very active, and my queen on uh, this light square diagonal is very powerful. And to put the icing on a cake, I have a knight on b4, which is very, very powerful, in which I could do some other checks. So this rook d1 was uh, the wrong move. Um, I think the move would have been better if he would have went uh, the rook f1 instead of rook d1. You know, even though he would have got his rook capture, but I think this actually cost him the game. Um, so after uh, King uh, A1, I hit him with the move uh, Knight C2 check. Um, most opponents would think like, oh, I guess he's just going to do a perpetual check. Maybe, maybe that's what he's going to do. Um, not at all, guys, not at all. So what he did is uh, he goes King B1 and I go Knight catches D4. I go knight catches d4 check. Uh, notice, guys, with the knight d4 check, uh, not only am I checking him, but I'm also um, hitting his queen as well. All right. So, guys, so my opponent, he actually plays a move, guys. Uh, he plays queen uh, d3, you know. So after this, guys, this game was pretty much all over. What is the winning move for black? Black to move and when, what would you do in this position, guys? I'll give y'all literally five seconds. Y'all should actually get this pretty quickly. I'll give y'all five seconds to figure it out.
All right. So, guys, if y'all saw this move, which I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all did get this. Uh, and, yes, that is the right move. Queen captures uh, D3 check. Uh, obviously, uh, that was on, you know, uh, he goes rook catches D3 check and then rook E1 on check. And then, of course, after this move, rook D1, rook catches D1 is checkmate. Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> Yeah, guys. So yeah, that that's how I got them though. But but yeah, guys. But just to um, give y'all understanding though, um, with this. So yeah. So I wanted to bring it back um, in the beginning with the dark squares and stuff. So with the knight f eight, uh, again, the engine don't never agree with none of the stuff I do. Uh, if they go h4, guys, uh, I know a lot of y'all may be like, oh, I'm going to take. Nah, just always um, push that g4 point. Uh, and the reason being, guys, you're not going g4 just to go g4. You're going g4 because you're keeping this um, knight from being uh, inactive. And that's the whole point of it. Uh, after knight h2, I just simply go h5. Uh, maybe the best move for white probably would have been knight f1 and then maybe knight e3 to get his piece on uh, some activity. Uh, but that's not how it went. And again, guys, when your opponent is playing the L, against the L shot, you know, they kind of really don't know what to do. Uh, so they try to develop, which is um, what they do. Bishop b3, knight g6, you know. Again, I always remember, guys, on this pawn, uh, a lot of times your opponent is going to drop that pawn on, on h4. So that's just something to get y'all thinking. Uh, again, if they go G3, that's not a problem because now you can just go back to knight G6 and maybe knight E6 and go C5. Uh, maybe not C5 right away yet, but uh, knight E6 uh, is a beautiful move because the whole point is if, if they go D5, now they're opening up your dark square uh, range, uh, which is what you want um, for your dark square bishop. So and that's the whole purpose of that. All right. So um, I hope y'all uh, got an understanding of, of that. Uh, we'll go to the next um, game. All right. All right. So this one, guys. So, yes, yeah, so this one I played as black. So I think the last one that I played is um, with white. So we'll do another um, L shot system game. All right. So let's check this out. Uh, okay. So knight of three, c6. Uh, D3 is played, and then uh, I go queen a5 check again, obviously. C3, h6, knight d2, g5, um, e4, uh, bishop g7 again, still going with my same plan, bishop g7, uh, h3, and I go d6. Uh, bishop b2 is played, and I play knight b to d7, and um, my opponent plays uh, knight d4. What up, Marcel? What's going on, man? <laughs> but yeah, guys, so knight c4, uh, I go queen c7. Um, and again, guys, uh, I go queen c7 uh, for this one because, again, uh, kind of how to, I don't know. It's, I, I think after, I think after this knight c4, hold on, let me go back, guys. So yeah, so after knight d7, yeah, uh, knight c4, yeah, I, I just play queen c7, which is, this is a typical move, guys. I, I get this, every, it's literally like every time I play the L side, I get this every single time, knight c4, right? Uh, my opponent castles, and I just immediately go knight f8, guys, literally. Uh, I go knight f8. Uh, now, guys, I, I'm threatening like knight g6. Uh, I probably could just go g4 right away. Uh, my opponent plays queen c2. And I go knight g6. Simple as that. Uh, I have a lot of things, guys, I, I, I can do with this. Um, I could go, I could have went b5. Uh, I could have did that too. But uh, again, uh, I feel like there's no major threats or anything. Uh, so that's why I just go knight g6, you know. Uh, and it's crazy, guys, because it's almost kind of resemble a black lion uh, position. The only difference is my pawn is not on e5. That's the only difference. All right. So my opponent plays rookie one, and then I play knight f6. Uh, that's what I played. Uh, bishop f1, and then, guys, as soon as he did bishop f1, um, 
I saw this totally as a weakness. So that's why I just played G4. Literally, I, I didn't even have to waste any time. I, I just played G4 right away. Uh, he takes, I go Bishop captures G4. Uh, again, guys, a lot of these moves that I play, uh, again, the engine doesn't agree with nothing that I'm doing. So it's just uh, pretty crazy. All right. Uh, so my opponent played knight h2. Obviously, guys, uh, I am threatening bishop captures at three, you know, trying to open up the g file to open up the king side. Uh, and that's the reason why uh, my opponent played knight h2, uh, attacking my dark square or attacking my light square bishop. So in this position, guys, now normally, like a lot of y'all probably be like, okay, I need this bishop. Let me go back to bishop d7 or maybe bishop e6, maybe. Uh, no, guys, I didn't do that. So uh, I realized that. Um, guys, and the crazy part is I got this from Elshad himself. Um, I, I don't know. I, I got this from him when I was looking at his stuff. Uh, instead of me going back to Bishop D7, uh, I just went H5. The whole purpose of H5, guys, is if he actually uh, takes the uh, my knight, I could just take with the H point. And now I have the H file open, uh, which is what I want. And I think this is very, very dangerous. Uh, for white because now I have the uh, opportunity to castle queen side and maybe double up on a uh, h file you know and cause some havoc you know so so that's pretty much what I did and I'm pretty sure my opponent noticed that because he didn't take uh he goes d4 you know trying to uh, dig deep in the center and um I castle queen side uh he goes a4 I go d5 um, you're probably like, why D5? You know, uh, the whole purpose of uh, D5, guys, is all I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to open up this diagonal right here, guys, which is really what I want to do. I want to open that diagonal, um, even if he tries some stuff with um, maybe um, E5, it doesn't matter. I would just take with D capture C4. And then if he takes, I could just go Bishop captures F6. Um, the whole purpose is just me to get this diagonal um, somehow, which is what I want. Um, again, I don't even think the engine is even going to, to agree with me uh, with that. Uh, let me see something. I want to see uh, what he would say. Yep, the engine. Okay, so finally, the engine actually agrees my um, plan. If he takes, Bishop captures F6. If he takes, and then um, E6, obviously. Uh, and I don't know why he would want to take this. This is dangerous, though. I don't know why the engine. Okay, just trying to block it. That's another defense uh, strategy. But uh, to me, this is very, very dangerous. Um, that's just to me. That's very dangerous. So yeah. So um, so yeah, guys. That that that's one of the uh, techniques um, uh, that I found uh, through my analysis uh, when I get in a position like this. Uh, to go d5 automatically just so you can open up this uh, diagonal this dark square diagonals especially uh, when white has castle king side uh, which is what I found out um, so that's why I did that d5 and, and again guys and even in a book it does talk about d5 it just doesn't really uh, talk about um, the d5 in depth or whatever they just give you some notes so now I'm just like really telling y'all like d5 is another alternative move uh, which I think is the best move, um, to be honest with you. I like this move, uh, D5, just to open up this diagonal and all that, you know. Uh, but my opponent actually takes, so I'm actually happy because then I just take back with the point. Um, he goes knight e3, and I go bishop h6. Uh, that's where I go. Um, my opponent plays knight f5, and... And, and, and you're probably wondering, guys, why why Bishop A6? Why 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 Bishop A6? Uh, the whole purpose of Bishop A6, guys, is because uh, obviously, guys, I want to. I technically, guys, I want to go Rook G8 and everything. This is something that I do want to do. Uh, but also, guys, if I do have to uh, exchange the dark square Bishop, I would do it. But I'm also looking at it as uh, this Bishop on G7 uh, is not going to really do any justice, you know. Typically, because of this pawn chain right here, when you have three pawn chains uh, diagonal like this with this type of structure, um, the bishop has to be in, in an active square. Just keeping the bishop on g7 is, is almost like having your weapon stand, uh, staring at a brick wall. 
You know, if you have your weapon staring at a brick wall, it's just not going to do anything, especially if your opponent's on the other side of that wall. It's not going to do any damage. You're going to fire that bullet and it's probably just going to reverse it back on you, you know? So, and, and that's the reason why I moved the bishop to um, a better square, uh, to bishop a6 uh, with a nice long range, you know? So, and, that, and that's what I did that for. And then also, guys, I realized that, you know, I can also bring my rook to the G file. Uh, maybe I have some chances of opening up his um, position. So, after he went knight f5, I just immediately took his dark square bishop. Uh, he takes, and then I go king b8. Now, I go king b8, guys, because I understand that there are some times or sometimes in a position where maybe, I don't know, maybe he might move his g3 and then go bishop h3 on uh, check. Uh, there are plenty of games where I had where uh, I didn't move my king to, uh, to a safe square or do a prophylactic move, and I find myself in trouble, especially if the queen was like somewhere on the queen side area somewhere attacking my weak point on a7. It always became a problem. So I realized that that was one of my weaknesses that uh, I always did in a lot of my game, especially playing against um, stronger players. When I play against stronger players, I always forget about just, or not really forget about, I just ignore just going to King B8. And I've realized that this is always uh, the best move to always play uh, a prophylactic move, you know? So, and that's pretty much what I did. So always remember that guys, um, if you're castling on queen side, you need to move your king uh, to a safe square because eventually they can use that as an advantage uh, to point where you have to be forced to move your king to protect, and then they can probably get a tempo off of you by increasing the pressure on your on your side. So just a little tip uh, for y'all. All right, so um, he pushes his pawn down on getting ready to attack my queen side. Uh, I just go a6, uh, he goes b4, and then I go rook g8, you know, um, he goes b5, and right now, guy, it looks pretty scary, like he's really about to do something, but no, guys, I, I'm not scared at all, uh, I've realized that I, I believe I have a, a better um, advantage uh, in his position, and I'm going to tell you why, uh, after I took his pawn, and after he took mine's, Matter of fact, let me ask y'all this. What would y'all do um, in this position? What would y'all do in this position? I'm gonna give y'all, I'll give y'all 10, I'll give y'all 10 seconds to uh, think about it. Give y'all 10 seconds. Cause I see a lot of y'all on here. Look at the whole board, guys. Look at the whole board. All right, guys. So if y'all we'll move. So if if y'all did a move, uh, let's say uh E6 and not that's not a move that's not a move that i i mean it's not a bad move but that's not a move that i would like to go for not e6 guys that's not the move e6 is not a move uh knight a7 is not a move knight a7 is not a move oh oh 94 94 uh if you go 94, uh, you do run into uh, this F3 move. So, uh, yeah, that's not a move. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's not a move, guys. Oh, you're saying, all right, so you're saying, so after F3, so you're saying Bishop catches F3. But, yeah, if you do that, Knight captures F3. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that, that's, that's not a move. So you're saying knight f4, but yeah, but bishop f1 on uh, defense is on uh, g2 square. So you just pretty much drop a piece and everything. Oh, so yeah, so knight h3 on uh, check. 
Uh, I see what you're you're looking at the night G three, but of course y'all missing night. Uh, that would have been a nice one, but um, that um night captures G three. So yeah, so that's not. I mean that very very close, very very um close, or whatever. But yeah, so now you're yeah. That that was actually uh, a pretty uh, that that was actually a, a really good one though, but uh, but I think after that, I think he got rook g two. So even if knight f four. Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a pretty um yeah that's that's a pretty close one though because even with this yeah if you do that you take yeah so now you're just really down a lot of pieces now so you can't mate on because of the knight on f3 so you can't do that uh, you can't yeah this is now now you're just losing so you're just losing a lot of, that, that's a lot of pieces lost. <laughs> Very, very close, but uh, that's not it, though. Uh, that's not, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely not it. <laughs> All right, so, so Marcel, Marcel says um, Bishop takes knight. And actually, he is actually uh, correct uh, with that. Congratulations, Marcel. That was a good one. Bishop captures knight. Uh, why Bishop captures knight? Why I do that move? Because of after. All right, let, let's go back. I'm gonna tell you why Bishop captures knight, and that was a good one, uh, Marcel, because that's exactly what I did. The whole point, guys, is again we have this rook on a G file, and again this is what the L side is all about. We're all about opening files and attacking and everything, and we want to attack as much as possible. And that's the reason why after Bishop captures f5, Queen captures f5, and then I go knight h4. So now I'm hitting um, the G2 square twice uh, with the rook and I'm hitting it uh, with the knight as well, which is uh, very, very uh, strong, you know? So, but Bishop catches F5 was correct, Marcel, congratulations. All right. So after knight H4, uh, my opponent plays uh, queen E5, all right? And this is where a lot of people would get mistaken. They'd be like, oh man, I'm attacking. Like, what, 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 what should I do in this position? Like, what, what should I do? Well, guys, there's a lot of things here. Uh, again, I am attacking the G2 square, right? And a lot of times people would get scared. They'd be like, oh man, I thought I was like attacking. I'm, I'm winning. Like, I should be doing something. Like, yo, like, what's going on? Well, you got to look at the whole position, guys. There's always something here. There, there's always something. Um, so, and that's and that's why I go rook captures g2 check. All right. I go rook captures g2 check. Uh, my opponent goes king h1, and then queen captures e5. Now, you're probably like, dang, like, should you really exchange the queen? Well, number one, my queen is pinned or whatever, number one, I was pinned. So it's not like I'm, I'm forced to actually exchange queens or whatever. So, and that's pretty much what I did, but I wanted to do it in a way where um, I had a big, big advantage. And that's the reason why I did it. I go queen captures e5, rook captures e5, and then I go knight e4. Now the whole point of knight e4, guys, is I'm threatening knight captures f2 on um, checkmate, as y'all can see that one, all right? So the whole point of knight e4, threatening checkmate. Uh, my opponent defends with uh, rook c2, um, defending that. And um, a lot of y'all may be thinking like, oh man, I could just go knight captures f2 and everything. Um, I go here first. So the thing is, before y'all do moves like that, because y'all like, oh, I could win a rook, uh, he's going to automatically uh, lose a rook. Instead of trying to go for material, guys, again, with the L-side, we're not all, all about worrying about material. We want to mate. That's what we want to do. We want to checkmate, which is why rook h to g8, in which I'm threatening a one-move mate. You know, that's what I want, right? My opponent then plays knight f1. Now, what would y'all do in this position? How can black move and win um, in this position? I'll give y'all five seconds to figure this out.
Not night catchers F2. No, no, no. Not night catchers F2. What's your other move? There y'all go. That's what I'm talking about. Night F3. Night F3 is the move. Night F3. There is nothing that he can do um, in his position, guys, because um, threatening um, Rook G1 uh, checkmate. That is what we're threatening. Uh, it's nothing that he could do uh, in his position uh, to stop it. Literally nothing. Um, even if he decides to go uh, knight g3, I have uh, rook h2, uh, which is checkmate. Um, or, or again, I do have rook g1 and checkmate as well, uh, which is still the same way. Uh, still checkmate. All right. So, of course, guys, um, after that knight f3, obviously, uh, my opponent, it was nothing that he could do, uh, which is why he just takes the pawn, and then I just checkmate him on that square, <laughs> which is pretty much nasty, though. But y'all good, man. That night, so y'all saw that knight f3. You too, Marcel. Y'all saw that knight uh, f3. That was a good one. All right. So y'all get, getting good at this, man. Y'all getting good. All right. All right, guys, so we're going to look at uh, one last one, but this one is with the white pieces. So we're going to look at that one. All right, this is a very, very interesting one. Very, very interesting. All right. So obviously, guys, I played as white, and my opponent played as uh, black, black here. Uh, I play c3, uh, knight f6, queen a4, g6, g4, uh, h6 and I go h4 and of course the engine always disagree with everything that I do which I don't care bishop g7 I go d3 uh, c5 is played and I play bishop g2 uh, again guys you know getting that long range you know this is what I love uh, knight c6 knight b to d2 d5 and then I play g5 uh, he takes, he takes, uh, and then he takes my rook, and then I take uh, the rook on h1, which is what I played. So knight h5, I play knight f3, and then um, bishop d7. All right. So after um, bishop d7, I just go knight f1. Again, I go knight f1, guys, because I do see the threat of knight f4. So I want to make sure that um, by me going knight f1, uh, I can have this dark square bishop open to where it will prevent him from going to knight f4. Um, that's what I wanted to do. I wasn't worried about knight d4 or anything because, again, guys, I could just go to uh, queen d1. Uh, I'm fine. All right. So queen c7, I go queen b3. Uh, again, I'm hitting the pawn on d5. Again, attacking. Uh, he castles queen side in which uh, I'm up a pawn now. So I take his pawn on d5. And you're probably thinking, like, why would you do that? It's probably uh, some discover attack. No, guy. And this is the beauty about the LSI system. A lot of times we could take free pawns and not uh, be under attack. And this is where a lot of – I ain't going to lie to you guys. With the LSI, we break a lot of principles, man. And I know a lot of y'all, y'all talk, like, you shouldn't take pawns, especially, like, if your opponent's giving you pawns because they have uh, development, uh, they have a lot of things, like, you're breaking a whole bunch of principles. Uh, in this position, guys, our position is so solid to the point where uh, none of our pieces is undefended. Uh, obviously, guys, if we really wanted to be real specific, technically, uh, my light square bishop would be undefended, but technically, guys, uh, there's no pieces even close to getting to the bishop yet you know unless the rook was on h8 already then maybe but in this position it's just you know it's different so it's it's very hard to even uh get to my position right now so my opponent plays knight e5 uh and that's pretty much what he plays he plays knight e5 and i just go knight catchers e5 remind you guys uh this is the reason why this uh, move is so tricky in a way, because uh, it's so easy for somebody to play queen catches e5. But if you play that, you get mated on b7. So, and that's, that's how powerful this light square thing is. But of course, guys, he didn't take with the queen. He just takes with the bishop. So in this position, I go queen catches f7. I want another pawn 
on F7. And then, of course, guys, uh, the pawn on G6 is also ready to drop. Uh, Bishop F5 is played. All right, so I go knight E3, uh, hitting his light square bishop. And again, guys, when you're playing the white pieces with the L-shot system, if you could win um, black's light square bishop, you are golden because now you can control light square weaknesses. All right. So he goes knight f4, uh, typical, he goes knight f4. And of course, guys, I go knight captures f5. Why? Because again, if I take black's light square bishop, I am golden, you know, and that's pretty much uh, what I want to do. All right. And, and not only that, guys, it's just a big advantage on my part. So uh, after he takes um, my knight, I go queen captures f5 uh, check. And again, guys, you see how much pawns he dropped? One, two, three, four. He only has four pawns, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what I mean? I had seven pawns against um, four. You know what I mean? So I'm up like three pawns right now, guys. And um, yeah, and, and it's just it's just bad. It's just bad on his part, guys. Very very bad. Uh, the crazy thing, my what my opponent did is he plays um, not the crazy, but he does play e6, which is the right move to do because again, guys, um, with this check. Um, well, I can't say I was going to win his piece because I'm not because, um, he's defending the knight, uh, twice, you know what I mean? So it's not really that bad, but anyway, uh, I do get him in check, uh, and I'm up three pawns and, um, he goes E6 and I go queen G4. Uh, he goes queen A5 and I go bishop catches F4, which was a mistake on his part. I don't know why he, um... Yeah, I, I don't know. But after queen a5, yeah, he, he dropped the piece. This catches f4. So I already knew I was going to win. I'm already up three pawns and everything. I'm already up three pawns. And then now I'm up a piece now because he dropped it. Um, he goes bishop catcher c3. Uh, and and maybe, and maybe it was because he wanted to, maybe he wanted me just to take. And queen catcher c3, maybe go king f1, king g2. Um maybe he just wanted to take my rook um but obviously guys i see that I, I saw that move so i was like okay maybe that's what he was trying to do maybe he was trying to do hope test i don't know but i saw that threat so that's why i just go king f1 uh king f1 he goes bishop catches b2 uh and then i go queen catches e6 gaining another pawn um rook d7 and uh i'm not gonna lie guys uh matter of fact I'm going to let y'all see this. So what, what tactic can y'all do in this position? I, I guess, guys, because our, our time was um, um, coming down or whatever. I mean, I mean, obviously, I still had enough time, but my time was running down. I, I did miss a tactic. Uh, this normally is not like me, guys, but I, I did miss this one. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why. Like, I kind of smacked myself because I was like, man, how the heck I uh, missed an easy – uh, a tactic, uh, something that I don't normally miss, but you know, yeah, guys, I I, I missed this one. Um, the crazy part, I saw it as soon as I did the move that I just did. <laughs> but yeah, guys, can y'all see that move? Uh, I get y'all five seconds to uh, look at it, but uh, but yeah, I I did miss a tactic. Yes, guys. Uh, the move that I yes, you are right, guys. Uh, Bishop uh, captures b seven. That that was the one that I missed because um, uh, yeah, guys. I, I don't I don't know why I didn't do that. Uh, I guess I got tunnel vision. I, I don't know. But the whole point is, if, if he takes, uh, I just go queen catches um, b seven. I just win his rook. Um, even if it was the other way around, uh, again, guys, he can't go king b8 due to the bishop guarding the dark square. And again, I just showed y'all if he takes, uh, I'm taking his row. Um, even if he did something like, um, you know, king d8 or whatever, you know, it uh, doesn't really matter. I just have uh, queen g8 check. Um, yeah, if he comes here, you know, then I could just do something like rook b1 and then I'm fine. But that was something that I could have did because I could have got an extra point and uh you know it just would have looked lovely uh but yeah i i missed that i don't know how guys i just i don't know man i just smacked myself for that but anyway the move that i played guys after this uh check uh i just go rook b1 
Uh, and then he goes queen c3, and then I go queen e8 check. And again, I still could have, I still could have played the bishop catchers b7. I, I still could have played it, and I'm like, yo, what the heck? So I think I was kind of like rushing because of my time, but um, but yeah, I go queen e8 check. Um, he goes rook d8, and then that's when I go. I finally go bishop catchers b7. I finally do bishop catchers b7. Um, he takes, and um, instead of in a crazy part, guy, instead of taking a rook, I did. I don't know what the heck uh, is wrong with me, but I missed like the easiest tactics. But this is the type of stuff that most people would miss this type of move. But I guess because this is a mate. Um, I kind of looked at this as like a puzzle in a way, because um, this was kind of like easy to me. This was easy to find. Uh, instead of taking a rook, guys, I did found the mate or whatever. And I kind of I remember the patterns in my head, like this type of patterns and everything. But the move that I played, matter of fact, I kind of already told you, so I'm going to just uh, do it anyway. Um, the move that I play is on um, queen b5 check. The whole purpose of this guy is number one, he can't go to none of these dark squares because of this bishop. He can't do none of that. And the whole purpose is if he goes king c8, I have queen c6 checkmate. You know, he can't go here because of the dark square bishop. He can't go here because of uh, the queen's guard in that square and the queen guard in that square. So this would be checkmate. So, so what my opponent did is, uh, which of course he only had two moves, either c8 uh, or a8, you know, and you know, he chose this move, and then I just got him in uh, Queen C6 checkmate. And that was all murder she wrote, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. So, always remember this, guys. If y'all get these, um, like, these patterns and everything, um, always remember that. Um, if you have, like, a bishop controlling a certain diagonal, you know, uh, these are these mating um, net patterns and everything. You know, once you come here, uh, there's nothing that you can do. Um, this is checkmate. All right. So uh, thank y'all guys for um, coming to this on uh, live. Uh, I know this was kind of, I don't know how long this um, thing was though, but but yeah, oh, it's been like almost like 57 minutes, man. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I hope y'all um, got some understanding with the L shot system and what to look for and the concept of it. You know, I really hope y'all, um, you know, really enjoyed it and things like that. Um, so Again, guys, uh, if y'all want to know more about the, you know, the L shot system, uh, definitely uh, check it out, guys. Definitely uh, check out my Maurice Bishop Chess University, guys. Uh, make sure you um, enroll uh, to the university, guys, because again, guys, I have so much um, to show y'all. I have so much um, sharp lines and you know ways to improve your uh, chess skills and everything, and. You know, I have a lot of students in there that, you know, they're they're happy with it. You know, I mean, it's, it's just lovely, man. It's just crazy. Uh, for all y'all that are going to watch this, uh, maybe y'all didn't come at this time for the live, but y'all may actually see this, you know, maybe an hour or two hours from now. Uh, for all y'all that's not subscribed, make sure y'all subscribe, you know, uh, and again, um, if y'all are really interested in improving your chess skills, definitely enroll in that Maurice Bishop Chess University. Uh, I will uh, drop the uh, the link uh, in the description box, guys, so y'all could definitely uh, check that out and everything. So definitely don't miss it, guys. All right, and, and it's very very affordable, as y'all as y'all know. All right. So again, guys, thanks for coming to the live. Um, thanks for watching. You know, y'all have any questions? You know, comment. You know, um, any questions you have, y'all can ask me about anything. And um, also, guys, don't forget to subscribe. All right, guys. Peace.